In today's video, we're going to be breaking down our severe weather season of 2024 forecast. We're going to be going over the temperature anomalies and the precipitation anomalies to dive into where we could see more severe weather and where we should see less severe weather than what is typical. All right, let's dive into things. And I do expect to see a lot of this this upcoming winter time and what this is is cold in the west warm in the east i certainly expect a whole lot of this to be present something worth mentioning is even though we see colder here and warmer here we're going to dive into this in a second but we're going to see frequent cold shots moving from west to east that are going to really bring uh, the cold air into where the warm is and that creates a lot of instability and that is going to be the fuel for our severe weather and tornado outbreaks this spring let's dive through kind of what those could look like and this is using just the next week as an example we see the warmth built into the east and the cold really really solid out west but watch what happens with that cold it stays present but we see a cold front extend through the eastern states and look we have very warm very humid conditions in here but we see this cold air rush through it behind a cold front like this and that is where we're going to see severe weather outbreaks occur. Not saying we're going to see that upcoming. I don't think we're going to see an outbreak here within the next week. But we can definitely anticipate that there could be a lot more setups like this. We've had it over the past few weeks. We're expecting it over the next couple of weeks. And all signs in the long range point towards these events being very, very frequent. After that cold front is all said and done, you can already see the warmth building back in for the central and eastern states, priming for the next cold front that's going to come rushing through. So we're going to see this revolving door of strong cold fronts and therefore strong probabilities at thunderstorm and severe weather development. Now, as we dive into the precipitation pattern, uh, this is the entirety of the next 46 days. Uh, and what we see is a lot of precipitation through here, uh, elongating through the west and into the central plains. So we see some of that. And also for the Gulf states and up the east coast, we see plenty of storms developing. Uh, what I disagree with here is that this is showing drier conditions for Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri. I expect these areas to also be above average as far as precipitation so i think that this is wrong here i do think that it will be drier for the northern plains however so i think that that is correct on that front also the wet out west and the wet for the southeast i am totally on board with let's kind of break it down month by month and as we take a look at the month of march our first springtime month uh, we do see this same kind of setup we see wet out west we see wet for some of the plains, although it still has this dry patch for the south central states. I think that this is all going to be above average precipitation. And I do agree that the eastern seaboard is in for above average storminess. I'm not, I'm certainly not denying that. I think that that will be the case. April is the same thing. We expect kind of the storms moving up this eastern region, but I think a lot of this is just coming from repetitive cold fronts moving through the entirety of the central and eastern states, bringing precipitation along it. And again, severe weather possibilities should be above average in these areas. We will break down our hand-drawn forecast at the end of this video, so stay tuned for that. Uh, as we'll break down where we expect above and below average severe weather as a whole. Now, as we move into the month of May, what we see is a lot of the same above average precipitation for the Northwest and also in through a lot of the Eastern states here, uh, even starting in the plains, working its way through the Ohio Valley and into the Northeast, as well as the deeper South where we're seeing above average precipitation for a very, very large region here. And as we move into June, we continue to see a lot of precipitation in this central and eastern region. Let's keep going. July, same thing, and even into August. So by the time we're reaching August, you know most of the severe weather will be behind us. And most of the months before that, we saw above average precipitation in all of these areas. So that is a big factor, uh, probably about half of the piece of the puzzle here that we need to go over. The temperatures is the other thing, and they look prime to have, again, those warm temperatures surge in the east just like this with cold fronts rushing through beside them that is the perfect storm for severe weather setups and I certainly think that's likely to be the case let's take a look at a differing model this is going to be the month of March and we see above average precipitation through a lot of the west and in through the south 
Central states and up the East Coast, I definitely agree with this. It has drier conditions over here. I think it's a little off on the drier conditions. I think it should be uh, much more centered around this area where it's kind of has mixed opinions in here, as you can see. Uh, but that's a small nitpick. I think this is very close to what I'm thinking. Uh, this is getting a lot closer here. Here's for April of 2024, and we see up the East Coast and through the South Central states, we see above average precipitation with below average up here in the North Central. I think this is spot on for April of 2024. And finally, for May of 2024, we do see above average precipitation for the plains. Gets a little bit drier for the southeast which i definitely disagree with as we're exiting in el nino here i don't think we're going to see this really slow down too much for the southeast uh, it has all the above average precipitation up here in the north and i think that these areas will be above average but i also think the southeast definitely will as well for the month of may so again some small nitpicks there uh, but definitely i think a lot of these models are pretty close to my thinking now, as we just dive into my hand-drawn temperature forecast from our spring forecast that we uploaded yesterday, by the way, so you can check that one out as we dove a little deeper into the temperatures and precipitation for the month of, or for the season of spring, better yet. Uh, we do expect these kind of below average conditions out west, especially in the northwest there. And then surging warmth through a lot of the east here is going to be the trend, in my opinion, for the month, or I keep saying the month, for the season of spring. Uh, the lighter blues is where we're a little less confident in the cold. I think it'll be there, but I'm a little less confident than I am for this darker blue area where I certainly think colder temperatures and snowstorms persisting through March and part of April is going to be a big piece of our upcoming springtime. Uh, I think that this surging warmth uh, in the in the east combined with these cold fronts rolling through from this colder air mass is going to be what really brings together severe weather outbreaks in this area this tends to always be the case but i just expect a more extreme version of it this year as well as a higher frequency of these cold front events and this will if this does take place lead towards above average severe weather keep in mind Here's my official precipitation forecast now that we're pulling up. And as you can see, we expect these drier conditions across the north central states, as I mentioned, with above average precipitation for the west, the south central states, and up and down the east coast. In my spring forecast yesterday, I called it a horseshoe pattern. And that is exactly what I expect. The outside of that horseshoe is where I expect the above average precipitation. The inside here is where I expect the below average precipitation. For our actual severe weather outlook, just hand-drawn severe weather outlook here, uh, this is where we expect above average and below average severe weather. Keep in mind, this is compared to average for the areas where the colors are. So I know I'm going to get a lot of comments like, of course there's going to be a lot of severe weather in Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, and not a lot in uh, you know mountainous Montana and through Wisconsin and the upper peninsula of Michigan. But... What you need to keep in mind is this is all compared to normal for every single area here. So if I say above average or better yet, above average severe weather across the south central uh, plains and the deeper south, that means even more than what is climately typical in these areas. If I say below average severe weather across the north central states, this means below what is normal climate wise for these north central areas for the severe weather season. So that is exactly what I expect. We have two shades on each. So the yellow areas, I have reason to believe there could be below average severe weather. Same thing for the lighter, more cherry red here. Uh, I have reason to suspect there could be above average severe weather in these areas. Uh, but it's really these darker areas like this gold color across the north central state where I really, really suspect that they will end up having less severe weather than normal across these northern areas. This is where it's going to be colder and drier. We're not going to see as many warm-ups followed by cooldowns coming through because I think the cold will be stationed there. This is all reason to believe that this will be a more stable uh, environment for these thunderstorms and really lack the development because of that. Uh, if the opposite is true in this darker red area, this is where we really have strong reason to believe that we're going to see building warmth and humidity very frequently followed by swinging cold fronts moving through these areas from the west. And that is going to be the recipe for, as I've mentioned multiple times, these cold fronts working their way through these areas is going to be what brings the severe weather and tornado outbreaks for these areas. We see it every single year. I expect a more extreme version of it and more frequent events such as this 
that will really, really cause this severe weather season, in my opinion, to be an above average one for these areas. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe as we do upload every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.